I'm starting the day in my dressing room because I'm packing for Egypt. Tomorrow, Philip, Mummy, Percy and I are all leaving for Egypt. So you can imagine that till then we're running around like headless chickens getting everything ready before we go. By the end of the day, this needs to be full. But first, let's see how everyone else is getting on in the house. Well, it's all happening out here. What's going on? Well, you're getting ready for the big journey, Percy. Getting ready for the big journey. Got the tyre for the Ford fixed. Oh, so both cars are ready. Yeah. All... Well, Percy might not be ready, but the cars are. <laughs> yeah, well, rearing none of go. us are ready, but the cars are. That's the main thing. All rearing to go. It looks as though there's a lot of rearing to go over here as well. Hello. Hello. What is happening over here? It's a delicate little bit of pruning. A little yes. tidy up. Yeah, tidy. Yeah. Tidy, tidy of the oh what was it elderflower it was yeah. it was way too big there yes it's, I totally uh, agree started moving the soil on the other side of the wall you're joking <laughs> in the corner of the greenhouse so we gave it a little haircut yeah we're we going to keep it there or are we going to try and get rid of it and move? um there are two really nice peonies either side so i yes. personally i would take the tree out and keep the peonies well, the, you've got a few in the woods we've though. got a few yeah. we've got a few we'll be all right yeah talking of the woods wow. we're going to be planting some wild garlic in the woods oh today. yes the bulbs arrived yeah they have so if you uh, go down to the woods see. today you sure have a big surprise do not ask hoppy for his rendition of that song it's very inappropriate if you go down to the woods today you better go in this guy if you go down to the woods today, you'll never believe your eyes. For every bear that ever there was, he's got the death for certain because today's the day the teddy bears out the rave up. Rave up time for teddy bears. So little teddy bears are having a lovely time today. Romping through the undergrowth. And what would he need Blighton have to say? Cresta Bear is frothy man. He's off in there, he's doing a little tree. At 12 o'clock, the coppers are coming to take them all away because they've been naughty little teddy bears. I'm so sorry. That is the best rendition I have ever heard of Teddy Bear's Picnic. Oh, and I've got done with gusto. That. that was with real gusto. <laughs> on that happy note, I'm going to go and see how Jared's getting on with the shot. <laughs> Jared's been working in here and I haven't been allowed to look until now. Apparently it is finished. So I'm so excited to go in. Oh, whoa. No. Oh, my goodness. <gasps> Jared is beautiful. <laughs> Even the taxidermy looks right here. Um, is that teacups hanging up? <laughs> yeah, we had, of course, the famous taxidermy brand, but I thought that, uh, yeah, like having little teacups that just don't have any set to go with it, we can yes. hang them from it and then, uh, yeah, it creates a purpose for it to use the oh, brand. Oh, it's so, and... so, so pretty. <laughs> Inside the wardrobe, you've made Narnia. Yeah. You've actually made <laughs> Narnia! Go through the wardrobe to the owl and the lamppost. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you really have got the magic touch. Mm. Thank you. We need you as I mean, artist in residence, Jared. Yeah, I mean, it's like magic making. I love it. <laughs> and it smells really nice. Why does it smell so nice in here? Because I made some sachets from some linen that we were uh, about to throw you out. You made these? Just, yeah. That's what I could smell as soon as I walked in. It yeah. smells of lavender. And these are the cupboard doors that we weren't using from the yes. wardrobe. Yeah, instead of having them attached to the wardrobe, yes. uh, I've taken them off because once they're open, you can't see anything behind it. Yes. So now we've taken them up. It's creating more light in here. And uh, Did you make the wreath? Yes, yeah. Yeah, we had leftover flowers uh, that we dried from uh, the patron day, actually. So yes. um, I just used them and made a wreath with it. Um, it's beautiful. <laughs> You're so talented. Thank you. Philip's not well today, which is a bit of a worry because we're leaving tomorrow for Egypt. So I hope he gets better soon. But uh, he told me all about the shop because he came to look at it yesterday and he loves it so much. Jared, he thinks it's amazing. <laughs> amazing. This is actually a gift from a guest uh, from Germany. It's like an old shop. Uh, she described it stand. to me, but I hadn't seen it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it'd be really nice Beautiful. if it had like the, the wrapping paper for Christmas, yes. Andy's. Oh, here are Andy's prints. <laughs> yeah, I, I created like a little area to feel as if she was in here painting. Yes, um, I like that with the <laughs> with the paintbrushes. Yeah. On the Mazagan. 
I'm very happy that you've got those sort of highlighted here because I'm quite excited by the porcelain goblets. I've been looking into the story about these recently because you see them everywhere. The charity shops here are filled with Mazakar and they're, they're quite pretty but unusual. And I found out that they're named after the town of Mazakar in Algeria. There was a big battle there between the French and the Algerians in the 19th century. And most of the French who were in that battalion involved in this battle were from this area of France, from Le Berry. After the battle, there was a kind of truce, a peace for a moment, and the Algerians actually served mint tea in silver goblets to the French, and they were pretty blown away by this. And one of them brought one of the goblets back and showed it to a local porcelain manufacturer, Pilivut, who had been going for hundreds of years in this region. And he took that shape of the silver goblet from Algeria and made it into a porcelain one, and they were named Mazakar after the place of the battle. And so now I know the history, I'm even more fascinated. So they were originally from mint tea, obviously, in Algeria. In France, they started using them for a type of coffee drink, and it's so thick it keeps it warm. But then they started using it for iced coffee, and I think the drink started to be named after the cup as well. And now I think I want to use it for all sorts of cocktails. We should maybe invent a Lalao cocktail to get served yeah. in a Mazakar. <laughs> These are really, really nice. I hadn't even noticed these behind me, Jared. And they're the ones that we used outside for the champagne. Yeah, y'all took a, a little stroll down the road. Yes. and Yeah, so instead of having them in a vase, I thought we could just put them in a pot that felt like that same moment. So like covering it with the moss, it re reminds me of uh, y'all sticking it in the ground. And it's just... A sweet little moment. You know what's appalling is that you're making me want to keep them <laughs> by showing me how well, incredible they are. Well, you can definitely buy them from me now. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just really sad that you're also leaving tomorrow. No. Well, I mean, I'm definitely going to have to come back. <laughs> All right, and we'll see you soon. Yeah. It is beautiful. Thank I you. had seen some of it, but my goodness, it is so quirky and artistically arranged, and it's beautiful. Thank you. Why do you have two safety pins attached to Somebody you? lent me two safety pins yesterday and I intend to return them today. And that's why they're there. Brilliant, mummy. Brilliant. There's always method to your madness, but there is always a strong dose of madness. <laughs> Would you like to have them back? Oh, yes, I forgot about those. I actually might need them, actually. Hang on, so this is actually oh, no. the great yeah, safety pin handover that we've all been yes. waiting for. Yes, we had a little um, a wardrobe digestion. malfunction. We we wanted to, you know, head it off and pass. You saved the I day. But I never leave without them. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're absolutely precious. I love your apron, by the way. Thank you. So this came from my little Cub Scout pack. I had cooked um, campsite for them for five years <laughs> and wearing olive drab the entire time, mind you. Do you know, and that's it, the reason I left the brownies. I couldn't stand the brownies brown uniform. Yes, yes. She didn't like the hat and she would kick up a fuss every time. I will not wear the hat, mother. I can't wear this hat. <laughs> it was brown and it was itchy. <laughs> yeah. I, like you, am a slave to fashion. <laughs> I, was, I got the cute shorts to go with the, with the shirt. And, yeah, and it was all, you know, darts and everything. You know, you oh, had to have it feminine. You've been planting the bulbs? Well, sort of. Sort of, yeah. it. Um, <laughs> no. Yes. yes. Mushrooms. That's yes. a cauliflower mushroom apparently. And and we've been told that with a hundred percent certainty that it's edible. And then so is this. I think this one has a bit like a chicken texture we've been promised. Yeah. Okay, can I quickly ask who told you with a hundred percent certainty? This esteemed uh, <laughs> Will Kirsty be cool eating woman. it with us? Well, yeah. she I lick stand a few beside of them. my mushrooms with <laughs> and pride. She did and this is a beefsteak fungus. It looks a little and like a porcini, doesn't you it see what does I mean? Like quite meaty. That's it. It's got the same texture underneath. Yes. And it's one? like a slimy, kind of meaty, bloody thing on top. Nice. Um, did I say meat? I'm sorry. No. <laughs> we have some that we want to just double check. Yes, which you can do at the pharmacy, can't yeah, you? We can. Yeah. I'll check so all of that. We have the shaggy parasol, I believe, but we also have loads These ones of really scare me. shaggy ink caps, which are <laughs> edible. Does not look edible. To this me. this one again is a little bit on the old side. They kind of bleed black ink and it all drips down and looks really gross. Mm. Mm. But they still Appetizing. really interesting. <laughs> oh, Lycoperdon perlatum. I mean, this is me showing off. Uh -huh. um, these 
Uh, Lyco meaning wolf and Perdon meaning passing wind. They actually mean wolf fart. No. Yeah. <laughs> I see it looks like a little cartoon gust of wind, poof. doesn't it? I love the way yeah. they put that into the Latin name. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Lyco, Perdon, Perlato. So yeah, they are definitely edible and I, I'd eat them raw. I'm quite happy to eat them raw. So I won't kill anyone with those ones. That's a cauliflower fungus. I need to just double check. I'm like... You told us with, uh, you told us 100%. 100%. It's definitely edible. I would eat it. 99 No. <laughs> definitely, but I still need to check. It's not definitely. Definitely, possibly, maybe. Wow. While you're still doing this. <laughs> confidence <laughs> levels are going down drastically. It's quite sad how, um, like in Western Europe, and I think in the US as, as well, people really don't have the knowledge anymore about yes. mushroom foraging. All of my cousins, my aunts, they're like experts in this. So like, sometimes when I visit them would go and they'd like be picking all of this stuff yeah this we need yeah, to pickle yeah. and this we can fry and and i have no knowledge my grandmother was the same in the south yeah. of france and she had mm -hmm. incredible mm -hmm. mushrooms mm -hmm. lots of my family do that and yeah. it's so delicious but i haven't got yeah. a clue because the stuff that you can get in general supermarkets so boring and like yes flavorless. i mean this looks amazing so i've got to say like, i really hope yeah. that we can eat this absolutely yeah. and i filled some clips of uh the girls actually picking them oh fantastic so, yeah. yeah what have we here pavlina Cauliflower mushroom from the Lalande forest. Dun 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 dun. <laughs> Ta da! And she's done it again. I have look, like an eye for it now, I'd say. Yeah. Just for this particular mushroom. What have we found? Blackening polypore. Yeah, and what's the other one called? It's the same mushroom, but the pale ones are younger. You can only eat like the pale bit of this. Right. Uh, it gets really, really woody and tough at the base. Okay. Let's try okay. it. Okay. So, should we pick it? Yeah. Wonderful. Shall we pick it? Yay! Yes, we can. Here. The tiniest scissors <laughs> for the biggest mushroom. Why are you. What are you doing? Testing it to see if I die. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm pretty confident with this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Never do what I do, by the way. You never eat raw mushroom that you don't know. Yeah. 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 Don't try this at home. Don't try this at home, ladies and gentlemen. Do as I say, not what, as I do. <laughs> yeah, then my dragons. Have you seen the mushrooms? Have you seen the freaking dragons? <laughs> the colours, man. Okay, and we found more. Yes. Amazing. And th these ones are really kind of fresh, right? Those that still look oh. really oh. <laughs> okay. So fresh they Jumping. Alive. Yeah. Jumping. <laughs> I found one that's slightly older. Look. Yeah. So I'm going to snip it off. I'll just show you the marbling that's inside it. It's so cool. It literally looks like a meat and fat. Vegan Wagyu. Yeah. Oh. See that marbling? Yeah, that, that's amazing. Yeah. I'm really impressed. Yeah, I'm very we excited about it. I mean, I'm not touching with a barge pole till they've been checked, but I'm yeah, impressed. No, we, we definitely need to drive them to the pharmacy yeah. and get them all approved. We think we may have a live mushroom spotting. Oh. We're not sure yet. Cast years on. Oh, hang on. I've spotted one. No, I don't think Bit so. past its best, though. Oh, no, that's a very, <laughs> very famous type of mushroom. Wow. Yes. I'm not sure of the name of that it's one. It's a delicacy. Mmm. <laughs> smells great. Yeah. Look at these. Jared made them and then just has not told anyone about them in his oh. usual style. But they're so I know, lovely. he keeps doing incredible things yeah, and, and then just then, being really quiet exactly. about it. And then we're like, why, why on earth have you, you, yeah, have you, you told us? Beautiful. Look at this one. And they're one. very autumnal. Well, I think now is the perfect time to use some. Absolutely. Okay, let's take them in. We lured you in here for birthday wine. I've been told that you don't like champagne. So it's birthday red wine. I'm not old enough to drink yet. <laughs> no, you're not. You're definitely not. <laughs> Happy birthday, dear Kirsty. Happy birthday to you. To many, many happy years ahead. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> that was a really nice party. And now, as you can see, I'm in the grand salon because Amory is going to show me how he's been getting on. Yeah, good. The wood is shit here. Oh, I know, you get it so frustrated. Unbelievably bad. Most timber from uh, in England comes from Canada, CLS. Yes. Pressure treated. Straight as an arrow, uh, rounded, edged, just a joy to work with. There's a 10 mil, well, okay, 8 mil variation in uh, widths. No. Yeah. That's huge, that's nearly It is massive. Look at that. Okay. Can you see that? Oh, oh. Looking down the line, 
how it wobbles. Yeah, it wobbles. It wibbles and wobbles. So it comes off the sawmill, binds it straight away, sends it off to whatever depot, hmm. you know, uh, builders' merchants. Whereas in England, it's pressure treated, so this kiln dries. They bang even softwood, uh, carcassing timber they use for stud work. They put in a kiln, dry it, pressure treat it, then it gets sent out. This is just fresh, freshly cut timber. So you're having to learn working with a completely different type of wood. Yeah. It's like every builder's prerogative, just making it sound worse than it is. You haven't started sucking in air through your teeth? No, no I haven't yet. <laughs> That's about to come any minute now. So you've got to do this because you've got to build your sod work, plumb and level. Yes. Because we're putting insulation in. We've got cavity bats hmm. insulation. So it's uh, rectangle pieces, rectangular pieces. So if you build your stud work skew with, you'll, you won't be able to fit the insulation. It's not like I'm being pedantic and everything's got to be plumb. No, believe me, work. I love you being pedantic. But then it's also when you then add on to it. So we're, it's not like we're just plasterboarding this and wallpapering or painting it. We're putting the uh, panelling on. So we know that we need our corners to be perfect. We can't lose that in the angle bead, yeah. say if we're plasterboarding, because you can just fiddle around with the angle bead on a corner when you're plasterboarding, whereas this you can't. Well, you can, you can shave it, but then you can see with the detailing if there's a skinnier bit and a fatter bit at the bottom or vice versa. So it has to be, yeah, it has to be right from scratch. The other funny thing is that on each corner of the doors were gaping holes. Yeah, so I felt that every winter. I then put foam inside of it, so it's absolutely sealed. There is zero draft coming yeah, at me. Well, even my string never happened line, before. My string line was uh, wobbling. Waving in the breeze. Yeah. <laughs> And you've got your first bit of insulation. What a beautiful thing. Oh, so is it this type of insulation? So we were using this. This was uh, what was uh, your insulation yeah. on your external walls. The U values of that is a joke. So we're instead now just using it so it doesn't go to waste in the reveals. Because we can't lose so much space. There is something that, that has, don't get me wrong, it's got benefits, but not for an external wall of a room this size. Mm. We don't have the space. So yeah, reuse. Instead That's of great. Away, reuse yep. it. We're really, really wrapping it up in a really nice, big, warm, fluffy blanket. But at the same time, with the breathable membrane that we've got on here, it's still going to be allowed to breathe. That's great. It's not going to sweat. It's yep. not going to stress. It's going to be able to still breathe freely. Even this foam, it's got micro pores inside that still allows moisture to transfer through, which is why we've got this breathable membrane. That's on the so wall. clever. And then we're going to do the same. We're going to literally wrap it over again covering this side. Oh, so wow, you get two lots of it. Two lots of it, yeah. So when we get back, the panels can start going on, it'll be good. Well, to be fair, I've only got that up, that uh, stuff work to do there. This wall is ready to be um, insulated and then the panels can go on this wall. So once we, dis once, well, Philips, I think, has already decided which ones are going where. And then I can add a few blocks here, a few chocks here to just add a bit more support for the panels themselves. Yeah. No, it's, it's going to be, be very fun. It's, no, it's going well, other than the wood being shockingly bad. Nobody in England would sell that stuff. But yeah, it's all good. Great job. Can't wait to see it when I get back. Now, you might be wondering why I'm standing in my bathroom wearing my pyjamas, a lot of jewellery and a turban. And that's because tonight is the last night before Mummy and Percy, Philip and I go off to Egypt. But also, it's the last night of our lovely volunteers, Jared and Angela. So we're having a big meal downstairs. Charlotte's cooking for everybody. And I was told that it's just dress up in anything, but just dress up. And I thought, as we're going to Egypt tomorrow, I'm thinking death on the Nile, Agatha Christie's, the 1930s, plus it's a gray and miserable evening. And I thought I wanted to wear my pajamas. I'm pretty sure that this is a way I can get away with doing that as well as dressing up. Everyone looks incredible, but Jared, you made yes. this. Yeah. This is a piece de resistance after an entire stay of superb outfits every day. Mm -hmm. Can we have a little twirl? Yeah. I'm sporting uh, as well. emos. Everything is emos, actually. Everything? Yeah, because uh, I found this shirt when I was there. Yes. And then uh, on my last day as a guest here, I found linen and... And you yeah. made it from and the I linen that you found? Linen, yeah. It's Jared Couture. Oh, no. Honestly. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I think it's going to be a cue for Jared Couture. <laughs> you look incredible as well. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Do you want Yeah, to absolutely. It wouldn't be you without the Yeah, I really don't know what to say about this other than I, it is death on the Nile.
Don't worry, Mummy and Percy, there will be no death on the night. There's no death on the night? No, not dress, not dress. No dresses, no mummy. It's a nudist cruise. <laughs> okay, shall we sit down now? We've both gone sort of turban tonight. That's true. I yeah. love the turban. I love so it. nice. Yeah, that it's looks amazing. Gorgeous. So I love the thing is, everything looks good with Angela's hair. Oh, what is going on over here? here? It's nothing that that spectacular, but I, I've all, all this time I've been ta I've been calling it taco, and it's taco. Night. <laughs> You're doing it the British it way now. Taco night at La Lande. I think so, it sounds posher the American we, way. We are, taco we are night. having fish tacos. We have shrimp tacos, and ground meat is so this is beef. So shrimp, fish. fish and beef, just to satisfy everybody. Condiments, um, avocado, um, lettuce. This looks delicious. It looks so, so good. Fish first. This is my starter taco. The prawn ones are my favourites. They are. They're incredible. That was a lovely party, but I didn't start properly backing until afterwards. Now it is three o'clock in the morning and we're only going to sleep now. And I had to just wash my hair this evening because I know there'll be no time in the morning. We're supposed to be leaving the house at eight. Oh dear. <laughs> It may be too early for me right now, but look at the beautiful sky that I've woken up to. Just pink in the distance and oh, look, the peacocks are just wandering around below. But right now, actually, all I can think of is tea. I need tea to function. And also, I'm pretty chilly because the night wasn't quite long enough for my hair to dry. Oh, it is such a beautiful morning. On days like this, it's quite hard to leave La Lande. But I think it'll be worth it for Egypt, especially as Mummy, Percy and Philip have never been. So I'll be seeing it through their eyes for the first time. Well, we would be leaving almost on time. We're only 10 minutes late, but we've had a typical La Lande hold up because Philip accidentally just put his suitcase into peacock poo. That is so gross. Oh, that is disgusting. And now we are going to have the whole car smelling of peacock food all the way to Paris. And poor Philip wasn't feeling great to start with, though thank goodness a little bit better than yesterday. Don't stand there looking innocent. You lot are in absolute disgrace. Goodbye. This is horrible that you're going. Oh, oh. but I'll be back. So. Yes. And Angela, I hope you'll be back. Yep. Mm. But maybe with Sharon. Oh, that would be party. such good yes. fun. Oh, yeah. So Did she can bring her whip again. <laughs> <laughs> Great hat, by the way. Oh, Always amazing you. headwear okay. from you. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Thanks. Bye. And, we're off. and the journey's been quite a lot for all of us. I fell asleep the second we sat in the plane. He's done the same thing. We've made it to Cairo, but we only had a two hour changeover between our flights. It's so tight and they wouldn't book us all the way through, which means we've got to go through customs here. We've managed to get through passport control. We're still waiting for our bags though. And we've got to check them in again for the next flight. We have one hour and 20 minutes now till the next flight. Getting a little bit anxious. Oh, Mummy and I are so similar. We keep coming up with other plans like Mummy yes. and Percy, go ahead. At least you get to stay in the lovely hotel tonight. And Philip and I can come tomorrow with your luggage. Worst case scenario. Like me standing in front of the plane. Oh yeah, could you do that? Actually, that would be very good. Me standing in front of the plane. <laughs> yeah, stop it. I can barely speak. We've run across the entire airport. We have our luggage. We've made it to domestic departures. But the problem is our flight's leaving in 35 minutes and we're still in the queue to check in. So I, I just don't think we're going to get this flight. They took our bags. You can see how serious it was. I had to use sight beyond sight to just see the signs for domestic departures. I can't believe they accepted our bags. And now the flight is leaving in 20 minutes and we're running to the gate. Those two little tiny dots are Percy and Philip because they had separate male and female queues for security. So Mummy and I went through much faster. It's like our third security of the day. Mummy is going to make the flight. Whether the rest of us do or not, I don't know. I brought the ducklings, Mummy. <laughs> I can't believe we're making the flight. Oh, this is nothing short of miraculous. Starting at seven o'clock this morning, midnight in Aswan. Yeah, midnight in Aswan. It sounds like a novel, doesn't it? Hopefully it won't be death on the Nile, but I like midnight in Aswan. <laughs> and now we're on to the next part of the adventure, which thankfully involves a bed, because we have booked one night in the old cataract hotel in Aswan, where Agatha Christie wrote death on the Nile. I would have spent the entire holiday there, but we could afford one night. It's quite pricey. Oh my goodness, we've arrived. I feel as though I'm hallucinating after that long journey. <laughs> So beautiful. Oh, we're going in a. My goodness, today just doesn't end the excitement. 
You spotted your perfect car, Philip. Not I'm not. Perfect car. I rather like the one golf of them. cart. Oh, this is a heaven. To be fair, I can walk that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, wow. Thank you very much. A little bit of hibiscus. Cheers, all. Cheers. This is beautiful. And my luggage is already here. I've actually stayed in this hotel once before when I was 18 years old for one night at the end of a Nile cruise. It was with my aunt, we shared a twin room and we were blown away by it. Even though the hotel was really run down, it was nothing like this. And I vowed that one day I would bring my mother here. Little did I know that by the time I did that, the hotel would have had a full scale renovation, totally changing the price. And we'd only be able to come for one night. I fell so in love with the place, with these beautiful wide corridors and the huge rooms and the views. So let's go and have a look. Okay, this is better than I was expecting. Straight on the Nile. This is the most romantic thing imaginable. I'd love to chat more, but I can't keep my eyes open. It has been a very, very long day. I feel as I am hallucinating all of these wonders. It's incredible. I'm going to go to bed knowing that tomorrow I'll wake up and see this view. And if you want to join us for an epic Egyptian adventure with Mummy and Percy, Philip, Curtis, Vivian from Chateau Love, Sarah and Steve from Manor and Maker, then be sure to join us on Thursday's video. And in the meantime, night night from Aswan. Thank you all for joining us for another day of La Land Life and I very much look forward to seeing you all from Egypt next week. I want to say a huge thank you to my patrons, especially Jimmy Kemp, Cynthia M. Kleist, David and Summer Lalande, Morgan Lawley and Angel Leonard. I'm sending lots of love to all of you from Egypt. Bye everyone, see you next week.